Hey guys, uh, Mr. Burns here again, bringing you another video. In this video, I'm going to solve a couple trigonometric proofs by using foil. So, generally, the battle with this, the, the first thing you have to decide is do I want to start with the left hand side or the right hand side? So, what I tell my students is that if any time foil is involved, you start with that side. So, I'm going to start with this foil side right here. So, I'm going to start with my my right hand side is equal to and then I'll go so if you don't know foil first so 1 times 1 is 1 then outside 1 times sine is positive sine and then inside two of these guys so negative sine theta and then last negative sine theta times sine theta is a negative sine squared theta so ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that this right hand side equals this co squared. So we're looking for to use one of our identities. So uh, there are a lot of them. So as I come across them, I'll show you them. So then we'll cancel out these signs. Generally with foil, you're hoping you get to use your Pythagorean identity. So you get to use this one minus sine. So one of our identities is sine squared theta plus co squared theta is equal to 1. So that's the Pythagorean identity. Now the thing about it is you can rearrange it. So I'm going to rearrange this guy because I have 1 minus sine squared. I'm going to rearrange it for co squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So now what I end up with is using this co squared theta and if you look at it that's equal to the right hand, left hand side, sorry. And we're done that proof. Simple as that. We just finished it. So I mean one of the things about foil is that you know what to do immediately, guys. So, like, if you're on a proof, a lot of times it's about which side do I choose? What do I do? So, foil is one of those things you know what to do automatically. You should take that opportunity. All right, let's try the next one now. So, the next one is a little more complicated, but I do have secants involved here. So, let's give it a shot, see what I can do with it. So, again, I'm starting with this side, even though there's a couple things I can do over here. I'm starting with this side. So, I'm going to start with the uh, left hand side. And then I'm going to foil. So I'm going to do first, so that's secant squared x outside plus secant x inside minus secant x and then last. So I can go ahead now and cancel these two out and I get left with this form. So now we have to remember that um, Pythagor Pythagorean identity comes in uh, three different forms or flavors whatever you want to call it so this is the first form right here so you can see it the second form is when I divide everything in this guy by uh, secant or uh, by sine squared sorry let's go by sine squared theta first so if I do sine squared theta this is what I end up with so sine divided by sine is one cos squared divided by sine squared that's cotangent squared theta and 1 divided by sine squared is equal to cosecant squared theta. So that's the first one. Now if I do that again except I do it for cos squared theta so co sine squared divided by cos squared is tan squared theta. Cos divided by cos is 1 and then 1 divided by cos squared is secant squared theta. So a lot of times what I tell my students is if you get a secant uh, squared or a cotan squared or a cosecant squared, you might want to think about your Pythagorean identity. It's not always the case, but generally, you know, it's a good strategy if you're not sure what to do. So you can see that I have uh, secant squared minus 1. So this guy rearranges to tan squared theta is equal to uh, secant squared theta minus 1. So I can use that fact that this guy is tan squared theta. So tan squared theta. Now if you look at the right hand side over here, um, I have sine squared over cos squared. So I'm just going to rewrite this guy as sine squared theta over cos squared. So remember tan is sine over cos, so tan squared is sine squared over cos squared. Which is equal to the right hand side and my proof is done. Alright guys, so I know trigonometric proofs are definitely one of the things people find difficult. And my suggestion is to you is to do so many questions that you know the formula sheet. 
So your teacher's probably going to provide you with all these identities and stuff like that. So you really have to be familiar with them. And where I've seen students fail is getting it approved and not recognizing things as they go down because they haven't done enough practice. So if you do the practice, you will expose yourself to enough of these examples. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.